Senator from Colorado. Thank, thank you, Madam President. I thank uh, the Senator for Illinois for his leadership and agree that it's vital that we pass this transportation bill. Madam President, in my town halls, we talk about a lot of things that are very different from the things that people argue about in this place. And one of the things that we talk about are the structural issues that are facing this economy. And we talk about these four lines. The first is our gross domestic product, the economic output of the United States of America, which is higher today than it was before we went into this recession. A lot of people don't know that. We're producing more than we were producing before we went into the recession. Our productivity has gone up dramatically since the early 90s as we've responded to competition from China and India and other places, as we've used technology to enhance our economic output. We have the most productive economy that we have ever seen. But we also face some very potentially catastrophic circumstances in this economy, which, one of which is that median family income has fallen for the last 10 years, the first time that's happened in our country's history. And the other is that we've got 23 or 24 million people who are unemployed or underemployed in an economy that's producing what it was producing before the recession happened. That's a structural issue. I've spoken on this floor about the importance of education in that context, because the worst the unemployment rate ever got for people with a college degree during the worst recession since the Great Depression was 4.5%. That's a pretty good stress test of the value of a college education. But the other thing we need to make sure we're doing as a country is continuing to innovate and continuing to dr drive innovation across the United States because it's those companies, the one that's created tomorrow, the one that's created next week, that's going to create new jobs here in this country, that's going to drive our median family income up instead of down. And that's why uh, I'm on the floor today, Madam President, to talk about a bipartisan bill, a bill that Senator Merkley and Senator Brown and I have worked on, on crowdfunding. And it's an amendment that I hope will come to the floor and I hope we can get to a vote. Over the past months, we've worked together in a bipartisan way on a crowdfunding proposal that would allow crowdfunding to thrive, but would also contain an appropriate level of oversight uh, and investor protection. We've done something very unusual in this town. We took time to listen to people, and we listened to crowdfunding platforms, entrepreneurs, and investor protection advocates, many of whom uh, support this bill and have endorsed this bill. We've worked hard to incorporate their ideas, and as a result, we've got a bipartisan amendment that has the support of both businesses and consumer advocates. That's something that doesn't happen that frequently in this town, and I hope that we have the chance to vote on it. I would urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to see this as a real opportunity to take one step, not a huge step, not a huge step, but one important step forward to filling this gap that we see here, to creating an economy again where rising economic output also means rising wages. And the rising economic output also means growing jobs. This crowdfunding amendment is a chance to do it. It's bipartisan. And Madam President, I have some letters of support I'd ask to enter into the record. Without objection. Uh, and uh, it moves this ball uh, down the field. I hope it establishes a model for how we can work together to make sure that we're actually addressing the things that I'm hearing in the town halls and that we're driving wage growth and job growth here in the United States. And with that, Madam President, uh, I see my colleague on the other side, and I will yield the floor.